Konbanwa, I'm in the sun. It's Gray from Makasashi's Tea House over in Japan. How are you doing? You good? You Genki? I'm getting better and better by the day. Voice is a little bit like gravelly though, but anyway, what can you do? Today, I have a review of a brand new series, a brand new title. It's by Mark Miller. Is it Mark Millar? And Juanan Ramirez, the artist. It's called Nightclub, and it's a vampire story. Now, this is a very special comic book because Mark Millar has decided to bring this out at $1.99. $1.99. Come on, Marvel. Come on, DC. Come on, the rest of Image. Can you match that price? I think it's fantastic. As far as I know, this is going to be, a, I think it's a six-issue miniseries, and he's determined to keep that price point for the whole series. One ninety-nine for a comic. Mark Millar's making comics affordable again, especially for kids. You've got to salute that. I think that's fantastic. Okay, so what you want to know is, is this comic any good? Is it worth buying? Well, I'll tell you what, I had a great time reading it. Simple as that. I like the art by a new-to-me artist, Juanan Ramirez. Let me see if I can show you some from inside. It's kind of a simple, clean style, but he does the facial expressions, the characters very well. There's some kind of scary scenes in here, and he doesn't hold back from the gore when he needs to. That was good to see. Um, the story's good. It's uh, it's quite a lot of exposition, but, you know, that kind of can't be helped, can it, when you've got an opening issue to a new series. You've got to build the world. You've got to set up the characters. And I think Mark Millar does this really well. So, yeah, I'm, I'm in. I'm here. I, I want to know more. I want to follow these, like, characters' journey and see where they go from here. So, yeah, it's a recommend. Give it a try. I mean, you've got to support. Like, it's a brave... It's a brave move by Millar because he's admitted that, you know, he's going to be losing money on this. Mainly because of the physical copies, because of the cost of paper these days. You know, he said it's gone up ridiculously in the last four or five years. But anyway, you know, he, he was determined to try something new, see if he can bring comics back to, you know, to kids, to teenagers, to people who maybe just don't buy them anymore. Because not only have they been priced out, but they've been, you know qualityed out by manga. Manga is much more affordable. The, there's a lot more stories. It's more, it seems to be more accessible. Yeah, and you know, there's no big, huge agenda with manga. It's just about storytelling. So good to see Mark Millard doing this. Um, I recommend it if you're into a new series, you've got a fondness for vampires, and you know, you like Millard's sense of humor. It's all here. Give it a try. Okay, what I'll do, I'll give my short story summary as usual. Now, there may be a few spoilers in that, so you know if you don't want to watch, if you want to save it for yourself, reading the comic, okay, please come back to it later, and I hope to see you then. Okay, here we go! We open on a rooftop in Philadelphia. We've got Amy, Sam, and Danny on the bike. Danny is getting filmed. He wants to be a famous YouTuber. What's he going to do? Parker! Are you sure you know how to do this, Danny? So, Danny sets off. Let's go! He's going to make the jump, but... Something goes wrong, he hits something, goes flying off the roof, crash, ugh, Danny! Danny thought being a stuntman would bring him fame and fortune on YouTube, riches as well, but what he ended up with is a broken neck and a broken back in three places. His mother can't believe it. I hate all these liars on social media showing off about their fake lives. After visiting hours are over, we see Danny asking for a glass of water. The nurse goes to get it when a strange shadowy figure walks in the room, seems to scare away the nurse. Nurse, are you okay? Is that the doctor? No, it's a vampire. He bites Danny's neck. Three days later, Danny wakes up, handcuffed to a bed. Jesus, what the hell's going on? Calm down, no need to be a little bitch. Who are you? He calls himself a detective. He also calls himself your new lord and master. We then get some exposition where we're told that Danny's injuries have healed during his sleep. Well, he's been there for three days. Why, why have I got blood on my pants? What the hell have you been doing to me? Detective tells him to take it easy. It's just your pee. Why is my pee red? Why do you think, kid? Then we see a flashback. Danny has a memory of drinking blood. No! Snap! He breaks out of the handcuffs. Get away from me! Runs and jumps out the window. Somebody help me! I've been kidnapped! What the hell? We see Danny start to combust. He's lighting on fire. I told you not to do that. Detective Nick follows him out quickly and covers him in a blanket. 
He tells Danny now he's a vampire. He'll burn in the sun and stakes will kill him. But on the plus side, he'll recover from almost any injury. He gives Danny some blood from a bank in his fridge. Now drink up, I'll tell you what's going on. Again we get a page heavy with exposition, where we're told that Detective Nick is putting together a team of good soldiers, as he calls them. He's picking from sick and dying people, believing he's giving them another chance. Don't see this as a curse, Danny. It's an opportunity. You aren't like other people now. He tells Danny that he can do things that ordinary people can't. He should be noticing new senses kicking in. Then he tells Danny to bring up some rats from the sewers. How? Just call them. You have a strong mind now. You have power over the weak-minded. Danny can't quite believe it. This is nuts. But he tries it and holy shit, it works. He's controlling rats. We're just getting started, says Detective Nick. We then get an awesome three-page training sequence where he puts Danny through the ringer. Come on, hit me! Reminds me of the Matrix and Morpheus. I'm not gonna fight you, dude. Detective Nick proceeds to kick him in the chin, knock him down. Come on, hit me! You're faster than that! Again, I'm getting Matrix vibes from this. As Danny takes a fast punch, Nick disappears in a cloud of bats. How the hell did you do that? He takes Danny on a climb up a very tall building and starts to explain more of his powers. We're told that vampires can change into mist or bats. It's unbelievable. Just remember, stay out of sunlight. All the rules you've seen in the movies, remember them. When Danny asks why he picked him, he's told, I'm building an army, but I'll tell you later what it's for. Okay, there are five more pages to go, but let me end the story summary here. Well, what did you think of that? I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Okay, I've got a few variant covers to show. This one here is by the artist Bjorn Barons, who's probably more famous for doing his Spawn covers lately. And we have a Greg Capullo variant. I was just talking about Greg Capullo's stunning art on Batman and Spawn. Now, there's one more as well. Uh, this isn't a new artist to me. Let me just double check his name. He's called Deegan Puchkors. Deegan Pushcores there, what do you think of this one? I like this one the most, I think. It's a really cool design. Um, I like the sort of used comic book look to it. Yeah, looking good. Okay, so please leave me a comment because I'd love to hear from you. Um, are you going to buy this series? Are you going to try this issue? Are you a fan of Mark Miller? If you are, which ones do you recommend by him? I'd love to hear from you. So, Please leave me a comment and I hope to see you in a future video. This is Grey from Makasashi's Tea House, signing off for the night. Matane. Makasashi's Tea House. Please subscribe. <laughs>